So we just found a wild reishi mushroom out here in the woods. Again, a derma dulski. Come on over, I wanna show you. Now it's right up on this tree. It's a live tree, looks pine, popular, poplar. And I've investigated it for a moment here and I found that it's sporulating because we have some of these beautiful brown spores on the top. If I go like this, you can actually see it'll start to make the mushroom go red. And it actually leaves a spore print on my fingertips. So this spore print right here is actually the way the reishi reproduces itself. So it'll inoculate these spores and they will spread throughout the forest. And when we harvest it, we're actually put in the basket. And as we walk through the forest, it'll actually repopulate and spread those spores to other logs. Now, the beauty about the reishi is reishi typically targets hemlock trees and it typically comes at the end cycle of the forest to decompose trees that are at their end of their life. Now, reishi, what it provides to humans is amazing because it can make you start to detoxify your liver and helps you sleep better at night because reishi has such rich layers of trichirpenes. Trichirpene as an enzymatic quality actually cleanses your liver. So it allows you to function better because your food and your digestion is just more on point because you're able to eliminate toxins. So reishi is like a purification in, of the environment. It shows up in the doctrine of signatures as something that cleans out the forest at the end of its life cycle for new growth to come up. And the same way that it actually replenishes and repairs your body or removes toxicity so you can regenerate your own cellular structure, regenerate your entire body. So typically when people drink reishi, they feel very calm. That's because of all those beautiful triterpenes, the beta-glucans, the antioxidants. It has so many different layers that can actually go deep into your cells, go deep into your body, help nourish you. And typically people feel when they finally get nourished and they're not relying on all these stimulants, it creates a downing effect as they call it, which it doesn't mean it knocks you down. It doesn't mean like it, it weakens you, but it's like a downer as in it calms you. It's almost like the opposite of coffee. So it doesn't overstimulate you. It actually brings relaxation into your cells. And sometimes actually, it's a lot better when you think about it. When you go a little bit slower, sometimes you can go much faster because you can see things more clearly in life. Jill's gonna come over here for a minute and she's gonna come see these spores. Jill, you wanna investigate the spores? Yeah. Come see the spores. Lick your finger and go along the top of this. And I want you to taste what it feels like to eat raw reishi spores right from the forest. Um, it has like a, like a little bit of a charcoal kind of flavor. Yeah, it does. And um, really beautiful texture. It's, it's, I'm surprised though because it's not bitter. Right. Right? Like it's, it's kind of smooth. Yeah. And it, ha it has like definitely the texture of like a dulse or like a seaweed of some kind, like when it's wet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're literally taking that reproductive gland of the reishi and bringing it to your body. Mm. It's sporulating you. That's it's pretty cr sexy. It's creating protection against infectious diseases. It's creating magic in the system. It almost looks like a warlock out here in the forest because you see a lot of browns and green tones and suddenly you see this beautiful red mushroom. And the more you pull those spores off, the more you take that in, the more it appears. So what would happen if I was to like lick the underside of the reishi mushroom? The re underside doesn't have too much of the spores. They basically populate on the top. The underside is not gonna have as much of that flavor. And when we harvest it, we're gonna take a look. There's a couple parts here that are underneath that have a little bit of issues going on, like some bugs are trying to get at it, which is typical with reishi at this point in the season. This is about uh, late July when we're harvesting this. At this point, the mushroom starts to have a lot of invaders attack it. That's why I, it's critical right now to be harvesting if you are, especially in Canada or the top of North America. So now, what about this like orange little crevice that's underneath here? It looks like kind of like a half moon. Is that like a, like a different gland of <laughs> reishi mushroom? No, that's actually a slug right there trying to get at it. Oh, that's a bug. Yeah, that's literally a slug, oh, wow. but they mimic, they look just like the reishi that's when they're sucking on it. So, that, so it's literally trying to feed off of the reishi mushroom. Exactly. Francesca, come check this out. Pretty powerful, like it feels powerful. Wow, it's spectacular. So is it known as the queen of all mushrooms? Absolutely. Queen of all mushrooms, Shaga would be like the king. It's a very feminine essence. And you can see it actually also has a symbolization of lungs, which it does cleanse the lungs. Helps with breathing. So if people suffer with asthma, typically reishi is prescribed by Chinese practitioners, Chinese herbalists. We're going to actually harvest this now. So in blessing it, giving it some love, noticing it, recognizing. Thank you, beautiful tree. You want to harvest it with me? 
Sure. Okay. Ready? You're going to take this side. Don't touch the slug. You're going to push down with me. Try to push down more from the from that part. And we're going to push down together. Ready? One, Three, two, two, one. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Now you can see here, this is the parts I was saying the attackers. That the bugs are trying to get to. Exactly. Wow. So we're going to clean that off. We're that actually going to... slug or would that be from the ray sheet? It's orange. Oh, this is actually, this is where it starts to uh, repopulate like itself life. in the tree. Cool. Yeah, you can see it's left on the bark, mm -hmm. but not from the slug. We're going to get the slug out of there. Come on, so buddy. would another reishi grow from the same spot? Exactly, yeah. So reishi repopulates itself very easily. It's not a mushroom like shaga that can take, you know, 5, 10, yeah. 15 years. After you harvest it, it'll come right back within the next season oftentimes. That's cool. Yeah, so you can keep going back to the same places you've harvested reishi and find more. How long was it? Like more or less, do you think that that took to grow? This could have been probably two months or so to get to this point. This is at the end of its life cycle once it starts having the sporulation. Mm -hmm. So this is really close to the end, especially when the slugs start coming at it. I wonder if it's good for the ears. Yeah, right? <laughs> Has like the ear sensation. <laughs> so we're going to rinse it down once we get to a point where there's like a river or there's like some water. Any little critters off of it. And uh, we're gonna then sun dry it upside down because this actually converts into vitamin D2 when it absorbs through the pores here on the bottom. And then it actually retains that medicine. So Native Americans during the winter time, especially in places like Canada, where it's very cold, it's hard to get vitamin D2 from foods. They would actually ingest it through mushrooms. They would absorb it through drying the mushrooms out this way with the pores facing up, sunlight would go in and they would brew it into a medicinal tea. So it's an amazing way to get vitamin D2 into your system. Super sexy one. Thank you, beautiful tree. And uh, can I get you being a little silly Instagram model with this? Yeah, get a picture. Model, Francesca, come in. Might as well come in. We'll hold it together. I'm still rolling video. You can like flail the race you around and do whatever you want. Actually, no, yeah, take a picture. Take a picture. Yeah, 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 exactly. I love that. Total goddess treatment. Goddess treatment uh, with the reishi. I've been wanting this for so many days. <laughs> <laughs> so once you find a mushroom like reishi, you don't want to go too far from that category of that space you were in because as soon as you enter a new forest style, you start to risk not being able to be in the right territory anymore. So usually when I find a mushroom, I try to stay within a 20, 30, 50 to 100 feet radius of that. And I search in a clock, counterclockwise foundation around it because I wanna see if there's others, because where there's one, there's definitely more. You just gotta look around.